If you didn't think that your sword blade was imposing enough, well, then you need a Type 18C medieval longsword blade. <laughs> Let's look at this awesome and fantastically interesting sword by Dark Sword Armory. Okay, welcome back to my channel, my friends. Uh, thanks for returning if you are stopping by again. If this is the first time that you have stopped by my channel, thank you very much for coming by. Uh, we have some really cool stuff to look at today. Um, uh, please leave a like and subscribe down below. Leave some comments down below. I love talking to people about swords and um, swords and armor and, and anything historically related to swords and weaponry. I absolutely love it. That's basically what this channel is all about. Now, for you guys who don't know anything about me, I'm just going to spit off a couple things. I am not an expert or a specialist of any kind in any of the topics that I'm discussing. I'm really just a sword collector and an enthusiast and um, really, really love swords. And um, in my free time, I read about them. I read about historical swordsmanship. I'm also interested in swordsmanship and weaponry. Um, from across different geographical areas as well. I don't just pay attention to European stuff, although that is sort of my prime interest. I love Asian stuff, um, Indo-Persian, uh, Middle Eastern, eh, really anything, um, African, you name it. I actually really like it if it involves um, swords and historical swordsmanship. So that's just a little bit about me. Just just realize that my comments and my... my um, opinions about certain things are based upon an enthusiast and a collector's perspective, not an expert. Uh, so just wanted to get that out. Okay, my friends, the sword that we are looking at today is this awesome and impressive sword by Dark Sword Armory. This is the Alexandria sword uh, from their catalog of medieval swords. Now, it is Dark Sword's interpretation of a surviving historical piece. Um, we'll get to that in a second, but this is a Type 18C um, longsword blade. Now that's the Ewart uh, Oakshot typology system that I'm referring to. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with it. Now the Type 18C is this hand and a half saw that is um, characteristically large and very, very broad. Uh, much broader than the other subtypes of the Type 18, uh, which is you know what Ewart Oakshot calls the 18C. Now the sword that this is actually based on is a surviving example, I believe, called the Harriet Dean sword, um, which is a Type 18C that was found at the Arsenal in Alexandria. Um, the Harriet Dean sword actually popped up uh, on the market around, I think, seven years ago or something like that. And um, this guy from Christie's, I believe, actually bought the sword uh, for Christie's auction house. Now, I may be wrong about that, so if I am, I'm sorry, but you know, you guys can check it out for yourself. But this is actually based on an original historical design, and Dark Sword Armory did take some uh, artistic liberties with it in terms of altering it and making it more of their own but just know that it is based on a real historical sword and these type 18 c's actually do still exist um, there's a few out there there's one um, at leeds castle there's one at the um the met in new york city um, and they look almost exactly like this of course the details are a little bit different but um yeah so the characteristics of an 18C are this incredibly broad and wide blade. It's extremely imposing. And as you can see, it's, it's, it is a cut and thrust sword that you can imagine actually um, is designed or supposed to cut extremely well based on the width of the, of the blade. Uh, it has a diamond cross section blade. And the, one of the really cool things about the Dark Sword example that I don't think you can find on some of the other reproductions on the market is that it's a hollow ground blade, which means that the, um, the edge, rather than sloping gradually right down from the ridge to the, to the edge, um, does this sort of dip as it comes down to the edge and gives it a little bit more of a finer cutting edge, which and reduces the mass behind the cutting edge, which is actually really cool. It assists in great 
um, it, it assists in cutting. This sword is a fantastic cutter, and we're gonna get to the test cutting footage in a minute. Um, I just wanted to talk about the sword a little bit. Now, uh, the original had a shorter handle than this. Um, you can check out the original. There's pictures of it online pretty much everywhere, but it had a shorter handle. So Dark Sword Armory um, basically elongated the, the grip, which I actually prefer. Um, I did have a, uh, an example from Ronin Katana. Um, they have um, an, ex an Alexandria sword interpretation, I should say, and theirs has a shorter grip, and I found it a little bit uncomfortable based on the weight of the blade. Uh, um, but the fact that this has a longer handle is fantastic, and the handle on the sword, or I should say the hilt, is awesome, guys. It really is. They they did a fantastic job with this um, with this grip. It's a wooden grip that's been bound in leather and then uh, cored and pressed, uh, much like you see on higher end swords. I actually think that this grip is extremely well done, guys. Um, there's no ledges down here by the pommel, and as you can see, it is a wheel pommel, and it is peened, as you would expect, um, with a characteristic feature of a lot of dark swords um medieval swords is it has a peen block which is really cool the original did not have a peen block so that's another um design feature that's unique to dark sword um and so i i should say that their their artistic interpretation of the sword um it has a really cool uh stereotypical 15th century style cross guard i really love it it's not bulky you guys know if you've watched my channel that i do not like bulky cross guards um, on any sword in particular medieval swords but it's very pleasantly shaped and um, designed it's pretty simple but so was the original uh, this cross guard mirrors the original very very nicely um, however i think it might be a little bit thicker and there are some small details about it that are different than the original but it it doesn't it, it it's very very close and the blade itself is really the highlight of this sword it's an amazingly imposing uh, sword blade if you were on the medieval battlefield and you saw someone wielding this sword competently i'm telling you the the psychological aspect of just seeing this sword um, being used in combat is something not to be underestimated uh, i actually think that's probably a component of this sword's design um, that you know, not a lot of people actually talk about is the fact that there's a little bit of psychological warfare uh, in this sword design blade because you know there are other swords that cut just as well as this does that um, operate the same way that can thrust the same way. Uh, the other subtypes of the Type 18 are narrower and probably can perform just as well if they're nicely done. However, they're not this imposing. Uh, when you look at it and although there really is no proof in um, any of the medieval literature or anything about warfare that that was an element of sword design I can imagine that anyone in the medieval period who actually saw this sword being used or coming at them would be intimidated by the fact that it's just a really big ass sword <laughs> and and that's really the best way i can describe it now i am going to talk about the handling of the sword after the cut test because i want i want you guys to see the thing move around and whatnot um it is not it's really hard to convey how this sword actually feels and how nice it actually feels based upon just looking at it. Because when you do look at it, um, it looks unwieldy, it looks big, it looks like something that would not be very easy to use, um, let alone use on a battlefield, but that is not the case, guys. This is actually a really nice handling sword. And I'm gonna talk about it uh, a little bit more after the review, uh, the cut test review. So why don't you guys take a look at the test cutting? Actually, you know what, before we get into the test cutting, let's look at some specs for the sword. Um, we'll go to Dark Swords webpage, we'll take a look at the specs together, and then um, we'll come back, we'll, we'll go right into the uh, test okay, cutting. Okay, my friends, here is Dark Sword Armory's webpage where you can find the Alexandria sword, um, and it has a bunch of cool pictures and uh, a little bit of information as well as the specifications. So we got a 5160 high carbon steel blade, which is a great, steel choice for swords 
Uh, they do a dual tempering with 60 Rockwell at the edge and uh, obviously a softer core. And then we got some general measurements here, the length, uh, total length, uh, point of balance and weight. Now, one thing to note about this uh, particular sword and all of Dark Swords swords that the blades are hand forged. So you're going to get slight variation, uh, especially it shouldn't be drastic. And I, I've never had the experience with Dark Sword where the advertised uh, specs are drastically different, but there is a little bit of variation. For an example, mine weighed in at three pounds 13 ounces and as you can see they're advertising at four pounds here so mine is actually lighter which is I actually prefer but you know you may have a different point of balance you know it might be a little bit more than four might be a little bit less um you know it it all depends you know these are hand forged blades and and that's not any different than any of the other manufacturers that i've seen who advertise their specs uh, including high-end um, high-end manufacturers as well so there are a bunch of different there are a few different options down here um, you can get a blunt blade you can get a sharp blade you can get a sharp blade with a scabbard and then their sort of top tier option is this one that brings the sword to 770 usd and that is the one that i have um, it's a sharp blade with the interlaced um sword belt and scabbard so you can see the interlacing here um, and it comes with the sword belt with the scabbard so you don't need you don't have to get that option you can get it without the interlacing and the sharp blade and that brings the price of the sword down to 675 but just know that the one that you're looking at here today is the higher one uh, the higher the one with that brings the price up to the highest which is 770 uh, USD which you know, guys, is at the upper end, I, th I would say, of mid-range. Um, so that's kind of where I would place this sword. Now, okay, so here we go. Some initial cuts. Uh, I haven't done any cutting with this sword yet, with the Dark Sword Alexandria. Uh, I love New England. I love the fall, but as you can see, I start to lose light a little bit early, but it is beautiful out right now. So let's... Uh, Let's get some initial cuts with this sword and uh, just actually see how this thing uh, moves. It's actually quite nimble, guys. Much more nimble than you would think. It feels great. Okay. That was very easy. <laughs> Let's try some more. Stay a little bit more stationary here. Sweet. All right. I love the sound it makes. Oh, I love the way this sword feels, guys. It's, uh, it's actually very, very nice to move around. Quite nimble. Woo! Like butter. Man. Okay, this is a cut. This is a cut that I struggle with, the krumpau, or uh, the crooked cut. It's um, kind of a weird cut. It's German, or from the German longsword tradition, so let's see if I can pull it off with this thing. Woo! There we go. Nice. All right. If you don't like being outside on a beautiful fall evening cutting bottles with a big ass sword I don't know there's something wrong with you
Okay, so cutting with the sword was an absolute pleasure. I haven't had that much fun um, in a cut testing uh, session or footage or whatnot than I have with this sword. This sword is awesome to cut with, guys. It, it just, it really is. And it has a lot to do with the way uh, the, the edge geometry is as well as the way the sword handles. Now, how does it handle? It handles awesome, guys. It is extremely nimble. I mean, I'm very, very surprised because as you guys, as you guys saw from the specs, this sword weighs almost four pounds. Uh, mine weighs, uh, I think, three pounds, 13 ounces. So it's not a light sword. And when you're holding it, you're definitely well aware that you're holding a heavy a heavier sword, but the weight does not tell the story behind this thing, and um, that that's actually one of the most impressive things about it. Now, this is a great example of a sword to look at when when you want to talk about um, how a sword's design and where the mass distribution is can affect its overall handling versus its total weight. Now, like I said, the total weight is almost four pounds. However, because this blade is so wide down here, and it's actually quite a thin blade too, guys. It's, it's very thin. Um, it does have a considerable degree, degree of flex. You can see the thing wobbling as I'm banging the hilt, but it's still pretty damn rigid. Um, good enough to be for, for thrusting, but it's very, very wide down here, and it tapers quite gradually towards the top. It does have a degree of distal taper, but I would say it doesn't have that much. Um, it, it's not excessively, um, it doesn't excessively feature distal taper, but I don't actually think it needs to because of how thin the blade actually really is. And um, it's just a lot of the weight of this sword is centered right in this area uh, here. And you could see the point of balance in the specs um, that, that I showed, but it's very, very nice to handle. It, it really is deceptively fast and nimble. Um, you can move this sword around quite effectively, and uh, I can't do it in here because I'll destroy my room. <laughs> but um, it, it's just so incredibly nice to handle, guys, and it really is surprising. Um, it, I had such a great experience. Now, the other thing, too, that I think that um, contributes to the awesome handling of the sword is that the handle is longer than the original and uh, which places the pommel further back which also brings sort of the center of gravity and the mass back towards your hand so I actually think that that helps out a lot but you know this is a sword where you look at it and aesthetically it tells you one story about how you think it feels but when you actually pick it up and use it, it tells you a totally different story. And it's it's a joy to actually use and swing around, guys. It's very easy to use. You don't get tired. Um, I actually have some long swords that weigh less than this where the mass distribution is not as good and they feel heavier than this sword is. So just want to let you know, um, I'm not sure... Uh, these are handmade. These are handmade blades. So I'm not sure if you're going to have a different experience than me. Um, however, my copy, my sword here, handles fantastically, guys. It, it really is. Um, it really is quite impressive to use. And as you can see, it cuts extremely well. Some of those cuts were absolutely effortless, guys, in terms of uh, moving through the mats and moving through the bottles. I mean. Uh, the first few cuts I did with this on Tatami, I totally overpowered it because I, I thought that um, it, there was going to be more resistance, but you actually don't feel hardly anything uh, moving through those targets. Now, I do have to say that uh, the sword came with a sharp edge, but which I'm not really surprised. It really wasn't sharp enough. Um, I had to do a little bit of work on the edge. Uh, it was very easy to do because the edge is so thin and that the blade is so thin. But just keep in mind that in terms of sharpness, uh, out of the box, it actually wasn't really um, all that sharp. And I do think that that's one of the cons of um, this sword in general is that, you know, you're going to have to, if you really want to enjoy the full cutting capabilities of this sword, you're going to have to um, put a little bit of time into the edge. Now, however, this thing is amazingly sharp now, uh, cuts 
I would say it's close to razor sharp, but um, you know, and I'm not really that experienced with sharpening, and I was able to get an extremely good edge um, on this sword. But just keep in mind, um, if you want it to cut the way it was in the in the footage that I was um, showing you guys, you're gonna have to do just a little bit of work to this edge. Um, however, it did come with a sharp edge, but I think that's a problem with a lot of sword manufacturers. They just don't spend the time uh, necessary to get the edges really, really sharp. And, and I've even heard people, and, and I don't own any Albions yet. I do actually have one on order. Um, but I've even heard people say that some high-end swords like Albion um, don't come with a necessarily sharp, sharp, sharp edge. Uh, sharp enough for really effective cutting. Of course, a lot of your cutting... Uh, performance has a lot to do with your edge alignment um, as well as your technique so but having an extremely sharp edge really really helps so that's one con of this of this sword is it didn't come um, sharp or sharp enough I should say because it, it did have a sharp edge um, the pros well it handles great it looks awesome uh, it has a really nice polish on the blade uh, it's very well constructed. It is solid as a rock. Um, I think Dark Sword Armory does a really good job with durability. It has an awesome grip. And it does uh, actually come with a full leather scabbard uh, that has a, a wooden core. Now, like I'd shown uh, before, there are... There are two different options for the scabbard. There's one that comes with all of this belt attachment here and this interlacing, and there's one that does not come with that stuff at all. It just comes with the scabbard um, as is. And that version is like $675. So if you don't want to spring the extra money to get this stuff, um, that's fine. You know, I don't really think you need this unless you um, plan on actually wearing the sword or doing reenactment or something like that. Um, interesting note, I when I ordered my sword, I ordered the version that has the plain scabbard and they sent me this version instead. So thank you, Doc Sword, very much. Uh, I don't know if it was a mistake or if they were just being nice or whatever but um yeah this is the more expensive version of the scabbard which brings the sword up to 770 us dollars and i will say the sword fits very very nicely in here and uh, i'll just show you guys real quick because some people really like to see this um is that there's very 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 little rattle or movement uh it does fit tightly but if you were to uh dump the sword upside down the sword will come out uh, i think that has a lot to do with the use because i've been using this sword a lot and i think the scabbard is kind of broken in um but it's a very very good scabbard and the fact that you get one uh with this quality sword um for less than a thousand dollars total for this package i think that that is a fantastic deal all right so okay what is my final opinion of this sword from dark sword i actually think it's a great sword guys i had um a lot of fun cutting with it i think it's very well built um i think it handles amazingly well um i think the design is awesome um you know it, it's based on a historical design it's very very close to the original but they did take some artistic liberty which i actually think is 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 nice i like the longer handle um, I like the peen block. I like the little different design on the cross guard, although it's very, very similar. Um, and, and it performs extremely well, guys. I mean, it's a great handling sword. It, perform, it performs well. Um, it comes with a really nice scabbard. Um, keep in mind, there are two scabbard options. And it's, it's overall a great package. And the sword looks amazing. I mean, this is just such a cool looking sword. And the fact that it performs as cool as it looks, uh, I'm very, very happy with it, guys. So yes, I do think it's worth uh, the 770 USD. Of course, if you don't want this um, extra stuff, the 675 is actually even a much better deal. Uh, fantastic for the money. Uh, it's less than a thousand dollars and it's it's a really nice sword and I'm very happy to have it in my collection. Uh, the really, the only con I can say about this sword, actually there are two. One, it didn't come sharp enough. Now, 
that's something that I'm getting used to as I continue on in this hobby. I can just, there are very few manufacturers that get the sharpening right out of the box. So that definitely is a con. And the other thing which I didn't mention is this shape. Uh, this is a minor thing, I'm kind of nitpicking, but the the design of the shape is awesome. Uh, the shape is awesome. The shape is nice. Uh, however, the finish on it does not really uh, match the quality of the finishing on the other fixtures on the sword, like the pommel and the guard and whatnot. Uh, it's not polished or anything, and it 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 does kind of look a little cheap. Uh, I wish they had done a little bit of a better finish on here. Maybe even a polish. I mean, they did the polish on the blade and the pommel very well. I'm not sure why they didn't actually polish and make the shape look a little bit nicer. Um, that's a minor thing, but I do think it's something that can be improved. Uh, the other thing is the sword has a little bit, and it's not bad. Uh, it's not that bad for Dark Sword either. It has a little bit of a gap in the cross guard uh, where the blade meets the, um, let me show you guys actually, I think that's probably more useful. Uh, there's a little bit of a gap. It's not drastic. I mean, the blade is hollow ground, so you are going to have a gap um, no matter what. However, I mean, they did a pretty decent job fitting it. However, there is some extra space around there that I think could be tightened up. The gap in the cross guard is actually not something that terribly bothers me. Um, I obviously would like to see it much tighter, but you know, it, it, it's okay for this particular price range. It's not really something that I, I uh, complain about. Yeah, I would like it a little bit tighter. That would be, that would be fantastic. So there it is, guys. The Dark Sword Armory Alexandria Sword. A fantastic sword. I had a great time uh, with it, and I'm very happy to own one. And that's my honest opinion, guys. Thank you very much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Please leave a like. Please subscribe down below if you want to see future reviews and stuff like that. Uh, please leave some comments. And as always, stay safe and have a great day, and thanks for watching.